afternoon, everyone, and to my Hebrew-speaking uh, Jewish people that are in the viewing audience, let me say to you, because it's 4.30 in the afternoon on Friday, that over in the Holy Land in Jerusalem, it's already, the sun has went down, and it's close to midnight over there, and they've already started their, their Sabbath day. Uh, so I will say to all of you Jews that might be watching, Shabbat Shalom and good Shabbos. Good Shabbos. Uh, what I wanted to speak with you about before I really get into the content of what the program is going to be about today, uh, I wanted to tell you that the study Bibles that I have been speaking with you about on previous broadcasts, uh, I want to kind of uh, I explain to you that uh, the study Bible, I want you to know its history and its purpose and its use. And uh, the study Bibles were something that have come about since the, the Protestant Reformation. And in Latin, the word soli dio gloria means uh, for God's glory alone. In other words, the reason that the study Bibles are coming out now and being printed in digital format too by the, the Bible uh, propagators is that they realize that the Great Commission of Christ is, is why that they begin to publish these and then propagate them uh, throughout the world. Because, like I've told you in previous programs, that 50% of the world lives on $2 a day. 50% of the world are illiterate. They can't even read. So, this is why the people that are putting these study Bibles together, know that in some of these countries, uh, many of the, the people who would are hungry for the Word and the message of the Bible and hungry to understand it and study it, they can't afford like a 38 to uh, 88 volumes of com Bible commentary that a lot of pastors study from shelves from anywhere from 38 to uh, 88 volumes of Bible commentary. So what the study Bible does is it condenses all that is in 38 to 88 Bible commentaries into just one volume, like this is the, the New Defenders Study Bible by the Institute of Creation Research, Old Testament and New Testament, King James Version, and it, it takes, it brings all the vital uh, information, like critical information, understanding the critical issues of the faith from a literal creationist viewpoint by Dr. Henry A. Morris of the Institute of Creation Research. Critical, that word, understanding, because of intelligent design. I was just speaking with uh, my friend Paul Herring, just before the broadcast started, about I went to the planetarium, the Robert T. Longway Planetarium, and for those of you that do not live around Flint, uh, Robert T. Longway was uh, uh, born in upstate New York, and he came to Flint when Flint was uh, a lumbering community and worked in the lumbering business, and then he got involved with Charles Stuart Mott and the formation of uh, General Motors, and before he died, Robert T. Longway became the, the president of the Buick Motor Division, the Buick Motor Division. So in, in tribute to him, uh, they have named, in honor to him, they have named the planetarium, which was uh, uh, built back in 1958-59 here in Flint, Michigan, the Robert T. Longway Planetarium. And uh, I was just speaking with Paul Herring this, just before the broadcast. Many congregations of pastors are bringing their children and their congregations on Sunday after the morning service down to the planetarium because there are certain programs that they're going to be airing up until September 6th, which is, I think, Labor Day, around Labor Day. From now to Labor Day, there's uh, about six different programs, 
And there's two that I have been so impressed with uh, as an educator uh, that I've watched to space and back three times for my mind to begin to process what I saw in just one hour's time. Uh, to space and back, it's on now up until June, or up until September 7th, Monday through Friday at 2.30 p.m., and it's on Saturday and Sunday at 2.30 p.m. And all shows, uh, adults are $6, senior citizens are $4, and youth are $4, age 2 to 11. And if you have a, you can buy a lifetime membership there that you can get in free if you have a lifetime membership. It's 1310 East Kersley Street, Flint, Michigan. And on the internet, it's longway.org. And the phone number is area code 810-237-3400. Uh, and uh, all summer now, they've been showing this to Space and Back, and many pastors are taking their children there. Uh, now, just uh, what it says here is Monday through Friday at 2.30, Saturday and Sunday at 2.30 p.m., to Space and Back is an extraordinary story of human ingenuity and incredible engineering uh, describing how the technology that transports us through space is paving the way for the devices and apps we use every day with our mobile devices. So it's important you bring young people because after their minds process what they see in just this one hour presentation, it would take, believe you me, I'm an educator. I know uh, what I'm talking about. It would take a semester of a class in digital technology and astronomy and a textbook and a teacher to teach and present everything that they are going to see in just one hour's time to space and back. You need to get down there and see this before September 6th. Take as many young people as you can. You will not regret it. And they actually sell astronaut food that they give to the astronauts up at the International Space Station. And they can actually have astronaut food there too uh, at the planetarium. They've got ice cream sandwiches and strawberries. Uh, it's uh, uh, freeze dried. You know, and up there, there's no gravity in the International Space Station. And then the other one, I told you there's six, and a lot of young people like the Sea Monsters presentation, so I will read that. It's a, a journey. 8 million years, uh, 80 million years back in time to an age when mighty dinosaurs dominated the land and equally astonishing assortment of ferocious creatures swarmed, hunted, and fought for survival benefits the vast prehistoric sea. And the administrator down there told me that this would be a good one for children too, but I'll let the parents and the pastors be the judge of that. Now, a few of the pastors told me uh, because they're concerned about intelligent design and creation, and they want their biblicists and they want their young people to think biblically. Uh, like, like I said, the, the planetarium administrator thinks that, that all these kids should see that Sea Monsters presentation uh, that goes uh, Friday and Saturday at 7 p.m. Uh, up till September 6th. But the pastors uh, that I went to see these programs with said that they would prefer that their congregations of uh, even older people and younger people not see that one, but they rave about it down there, though, the people, uh, the people that are actually presenting it. But the, the, the pastors, and I'm sure you can understand that in the faith community, do not really uh, care to have their children go to that one because they believe that the creation isn't even 10,000 years old. And in that program, it says that the creation is about 80 million years old. So you, you can see why the pastors kind of object to your kids going to that program. But I don't think there would be anything wrong with them seeing this to space and back that I was telling you about. Uh, and also uh, Space Park 360, June 5th. It started June 5th and it goes up till September 5th, Friday and Saturday at 8 p.m. It's the later one for the older people. You could take young people too because it's appropriate, I think, for young people. Uh, and I do think from a biblicist, creationist, intelligent de design point of view, uh, to space and back would be good for young Christian people and uh, biblicists, and this Space Park 360 would be good. It's just opening up and showing them 
a deeper look into the universe that has come about because of the Hubble Space Telescope. They found things in deep space that we never had no idea of, like millions of uh, galaxies like our own, the Milky Way, that they didn't even know of. So uh, this space park, uh, 360, from uh, June 5th to September 5th, Friday and Saturday at 8 p.m., uh, seen from the rider's perspective, uh, Space Park 360 takes the state-of-the-art technologies of full dome systems and combines them with heart-throbbing thrill rides to create a unique entertainment show never seen before on the dome. And it's like, you know, like Earth is the third planet from the sun in our solar system. In our solar system, our sun and our planets are in the Milky Way galaxy. And um, uh, they told me down there that NASA has not, and the Russians have not, in their space programs, ever been able to get anything back from Jupiter as far as, like, dust on the surface because nothing has come back from there except transmitted photos. So, But we do have moon dust here from our astronauts. And uh, they want to work on putting man on Mars and Jupiter. Uh, and as you know, the Earth is the third planet from the Sun, and uh, there's about nine or ten planets in our solar system, and this uh, Space Park 360, actually, from your seat, it's like you are on a roller coaster, and it takes you to nine different space flights on a roller coaster to the nine different planets that, that are uh, orbiting our Sun in our solar system. It's a must-see, I'm telling you. From a Christian, biblicist, creationist point of view, it's a must-see for all of the pastors in their churches. Again, Space Park 360 and to space and back, the long way planetarium. Uh, now, uh, with that, uh, going back to uh, the... I spoke momentarily at the end of my last broadcast uh, uh, about Starstruck Longway Planetarium reopening after this new reconstruction that they've done. And uh, after recent res uh, renovations, Longway Planetarium has reopened May 30th, has the state's most advanced and largest planetarium. The planetarium replaced a 14-year-old projection system this past winter with a new Digit Star 5 system, a new sound system, and new seating. The $2 million renovation is funded by the, mostly by the C.S. Mott Foundation. And um, like I said, there's only two other places on the planet that have this program, and that is in Brazil and in uh, the United Kingdom. So while it's here up to Labor Day, you should try to get down there. And at least, if you can't do anything else, try to see to space and back. It'll it, Bring your children. It will help them understand everything much more clear about the, the universe, our lives, and mobile devices that we're using in this new digital age that we've had since the, the discovery of the microchip we call the integrated circuit about 65 years ago to space and back up to September 6, 2015 Monday through Friday at 2.30 p.m. and Saturday and Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Oh, I hope you can get down there and see it. I'm so excited about that. Uh, now, uh, um, as I was talking to you earlier uh, about the uh, separation before I get back to the study Bible uh, issue and concern uh, the people that are involved in increasing Bible literacy and Bible propagation on the whole planet even reaching the uh, the peoples that can't afford uh, a, a uh, 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 an 88 a, a 38 to 88 volume of Bible commentary well now they are putting out a whole lot of just one one book of the Old and New Testament study Bibles. 
and we, this is getting out all over the world, and it's increasing Bible literacy and Bible propagation in a in a in a phenomenal way. I cannot. There's not even words to begin to express to you. It'll take eternity to see the effects of what's happening right now, the impact that this is having right now on the whole planet of Earth. And so, uh, now, uh, Mott College uh, was founded in 1923 by uh, the Charles Stewart Mott Foundation. And um, uh, I was talking to you about the different buildings on the campus at the last broadcast, and toward the end I told you that there was a uh, seminar on uh, 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 what, how should we think about uh, the separation of church and state. Uh, fr uh, from a secular view in our country, this very issue has been uh, included by the framers of our Bill of Rights and the Constitution and in the Declaration of Independence. It's all by the the, the people that wrote those documents, they had this separation of church and state in mind. And there was a seminar at the Regional Technology Center over at the Mott Community College campus that uh, addressed that. And I, I really didn't have time in the last broadcast to kind of let your mind wrap around what that presentation was about. But you've all, I'm sure, heard Jesus' quotation in Mark chapter 12, verse 17, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. Well, since uh, the beginning of the Christian church, believers have struggled to understand the proper relationship between the church and the state. Uh, some have submitted to the state in all things. Others have refused to recognize any governmental authority. Uh, and the, the seminar that was over there at the Regional Technology Center uh, explored the biblical teaching regarding the church's relationship to the state, and it was explained how we are to relate to uh, the God-ordained authority of the government, and uh, it, uh, also addressed was the modern church-state relation. You know, President Reagan, back in the 80s, in his watch, he said that he doesn't think there you can separate God from politics. <laughs> but that separation of church and state uh, clause is in the documents of uh, the founding of our nation. Uh, and uh, that was about 239 years ago. Happy July 4th, everybody. <laughs> Independence Day, I... Uh, didn't have time to really uh, focus on July 4th and wish you a happy Independence Day because I had to go to the Wisconsin Dells. I had a family reunion over there. Oh, I love the, the what is called the uh, Wisconsin Dells Duck Amphibious Boats where we took a ride on the Wisconsin River and Lake and uh, all the canyons, granite canyons over there, riding on amphibious ducks on land and on water. Uh, and all the different attractions. I tell you, the Wisconsin Dells is one of the top ten international tourist attractions in the world. Well, well in North America, I'll put it that way. Oh, every, on a, just a slow day, there's 3,000 people at every site. You know, that kind of took me away from July 4th because I was up in Wisconsin Dells at a family reunion. But uh, happy Independence Day, everybody. Uh, and uh, with that, you know, that's you know, 239 years ago when they talked about the separation of church and state in the founding documents and how we should think about that. And they actually at that seminar or symposium at the uh, Regional Technology Center uh, gave us advice for those under godly and ungodly rulers. Because sometimes, like, look at Mao Zedong or uh, Stalin uh, after World War II. I mean, sometimes you have ungodly and he, he mass murders his own people. Like I told you in one of my previous broadcasts, uh, Saddam Hussein killed more Arabs than any other man in history. So we have to live sometimes as humans on this third planet from the sun uh, under godly and ungodly uh, rulers. And that seminar was helping us wrap our minds around that. Um, we looked at such topics as legal force, civil obedience, the sword and the keys, uh, established religion, uh, an instrument of evil, civil disobedience, and questions and answers. So it was uh, really uh, 
something to, to listen to that, uh, pro, that presentation. Uh, now, uh, I did want to get back to uh, the uh, study Bible and why it's important to have study Bibles, especially in, in now that uh, uh, everything is a uh, uh, shrinking global community. And uh, at the beginning of the 1900s, the early 1900s of the 20th century, uh, the media explosion changed the whole landscape of what we call Christianity. So we need to be looking at these. These are critical issues. But I wanted to set that aside right now in my presentation because I wanted, my attention was called to the, you know, I read, I subscribe to the Concerned Pastors for Social Action, Courier. And on the front page, this is breaking news, ladies and gentlemen, it says that the injunction to reduce water rates, city fears bankruptcy. And it says the city of Flint's water rates saw a major development last week. Genesee Circuit Court Judge Archie Heyman ruled the city must discontinue the rate hikes, which began in 2011. My mother's in heaven going, oh, I'm so happy because she, she passed away in 2014. And at 91 years old, and she was concerned. She was noticing since 2011, our water bills were going tripling, and she couldn't understand what was up with that. But, oh, she will be glad to hear this. Uh, this injunction would amount to a 35% decrease in water rates and put a pause on shutoffs and liens against properties deemed delinquent during this period. And apparently, ladies and gentlemen, the water rates here locally in Flint, Michigan, were raised all at once, and Circuit Judge Archie Heyman ruled this increase was unlawful and that if an increase were needed, it should have taken place over time. That increase raised Flint's water rates to among the top in the country. Uh, Mayor Walling's opponent, Karen Weaver, has been outspoken about the quality and safety of water supply. And uh, the Concerned Pastors for Social Action actually had a photo in the last issue, last week's issue, of Mayor Walling and his opponent, Karen Weaver, because in November there's going to be a runoff election for mayor here now. Uh, Karen Weaver is a licensed psychologist, and she's a candidate that is opposing uh, Mayor Dane Walling. And... Uh, with regard to that election that is coming up in November, uh, also on the front page of a uh, Concerned Pastors for Social Action Courier uh, was our dearly beloved city clerk, Inez Brown. And uh, uh, look at that. Isn't that a beautiful photo of Inez? Uh, and I went down to speak with her to get before my mother passed away an absentee ballot for my mother because she was, uh, wasn't was able to go to the polls and vote. And that's when I spoke with uh, our beloved city clerk, Inez Brown. Uh, and uh, on this article, in addition to the Great Lakes Baptist District Association Scholarship, uh, the Great Lakes Baptist District Association is pleased to make uh, scholarships available to members of the association who have uh, chose to further their post-high school education by attending an accredited two- or four-year educational institution. These scholarships are made available to members of the association who are high school seniors or GED recipients enrolled in educational curriculums which lead to an associate or undergraduate uh, degree or a, a vocational uh, technical program and meet the following eligibility uh, criteria, eligibility criteria for all applicants. Uh, that is a great announcement, what the Great Lakes Baptist District is doing, association. And our mo moderator at large is the highly esteemed and beloved uh, Pastor Louis Randolph of Antioch Missionary Baptist Church down on Stewart Avenue, right next to where Buick City used to be. Now, this, uh, here again is Inez Brown, and I, I wanted to share with you her comment here in this article. Uh, statement from Flint City uh, Clerk Inez M. Brown. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the Michigan Legislature, Governor Rick Snyder, and Secretary of State's official 
uh, office uh, for their support of Flint mayoral primary election process matter that we have just went through in the primary election. I, I'd also like to thank the citizens of the city of Flint for their outpouring of support in these last few weeks. As all of you fellow citizens know, I love our city and have dedicated my career to serving it and all of you and will continue to do my best to fulfill my role with the city of Flint. I am honored and appreciate the trust city residents have bestowed upon me and I want to assure you that I do not take that trust lightly and I am dedicated to redoubling my efforts to serve all of you efficiently and completely. Oh, uh, Inez Brown, I'm going to really miss her when she uh, retires. She is uh, greatly beloved and highly esteemed also in our local city government. And with regard to that, uh, I uh, wanted to tell you all because I sense an urgency that Saturday, September 19th, uh, is Yom Kippur week. Yom is a Hebrew word for day, and Kippur is a Hebrew word for covering, uh, covering day of atonement in the Judea, uh, Judaistic Hebraic religion. And that is the day that Geneva Spears and Pastor Scott Beck uh, have planned to have a inner city faith a rally down at the front lawn of the city hall. Flint Prayer Chain Day is coming up on Saturday. That would be a, sh a Sabbath day for the Jew on Shabbos, where they always say good Shabbos or Shabbat Shalom. Well, it's Saturday, September 19th. Is Remember, everyone in our city, come on down to the city hall at the inner uh, city faith rally of the Flint Prayer Chain Day. We love you, we love you, we love you, and we love to have you participate in it. And uh, as I close out this particular session, I want to implore you to please come back because I have so much more to share with you of critical issues. in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move, so I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. un corto trayecto de su colonia hasta su bosque local. Encuentre actividades como pasear en bote y en bicicleta o ir a acampar y de excursión, además de mucho más. Para encontrar un parque o zona verde cerca de usted, visite descubreelbosque.org. If I got to go to college, oh my goodness. I like discovering new things. You get to see what works for you and what doesn't. 
that helps you evolve as a person. You get to make like a, a supernova of skill or talent or whatever it is. I've always wanted to go to college. I just feel like that's my destiny. My name is Queen and I am your dividend. Everybody. I'm so pleased, ladies and gentlemen, that you have joined me. And I was just looking at this uh, recent uh, Concerned Pastors for Social Action Corridor, and the one reason I really love to subscribe to it, uh, you know, it keeps you abreast all the different uh, current events at all different levels of the government, but it also does something that other newspapers do not do as far as the Flint Journal, the Detroit News, the Detroit Free Press, and the Chicago Tribune. Uh, they carry news of religious events, but they do not have any teaching out of Sunday school lesson literature in their publication. And here, like in the Concerned Pastors for uh, this particular uh, issue, August 4, August 16th, it says uh, uh, Reverend Clifford Burks has got a demand for justice out of uh, the uh, Bible Expositor and Illuminator Uniform Sunday School Lesson book for this week and it said a demand for justice and the golden text it was out of Zechariah Old Testament minor prophet chapter 7 verses 8 through 14 thus speaketh the Lord of hosts saying execute true judgment and show mercy and compassion every man to his brother and oppress not the widow nor the fatherless the stranger nor the poor and let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart and the lesson outline was uh, Roman numeral number one, God's requirements, Zechariah chapter 7, verses 8 through 10. Roman numeral number two on the lesson outline, Israel's refusal, uh, Zechariah chapter 7, uh, verses 11 through 12a. And Roman numeral number three on the lesson outline, God's response. And that would be uh, the verses uh, Zechariah. Chapter 7, verses 12b through 14. Uh, the, uh, also, they have a sighting of Andrew Young. They have a picture of Andrew Young in here with uh, the late Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. I'll put it in front of the camera for you to see right there. And it, 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 it says that um, Andrew Young discusses the 50th anniversary of Voting Rights Act and voter suppression. Uh, and it's the 50th anniversary of the Voting Rights Act, and sadly, it's no time to celebrate. Ambassador Andrew Young says that the vote uh, suppression remains a problem despite the historic legislation to prevent it. It is under fire. It's more than the Voting Rights Act. Now I think it's bad, if not worse, in Ohio, New Jersey, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, as it is in the South. They are trying to suppress the vote of senior citizens, black people, and young people. You, you can vote with a gun license, but you can't vote with a student ID card. They have all kinds of efforts to keep us down, Young said. Uh, now, I just told you in the previous uh, broadcast that uh, Inez Brown, the city clerk, where you go down for absentee ballots and register for voter registration, she's urging you all beloved citizens of our beloved community of Flint to please remember that November is election time and she, she wants you all to get out and make an impact and make a difference. So please, uh, don't disappoint uh, Inez Brown on that issue. Uh, she loves each and every one of you so dearly. Now, uh, when President Lyndon Johnson, we call LBJ, signed the Voting Rights Act on uh, August 6, 1965, the original bill was uh, introduced uh, in the uh, 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 Senate by Republican Everett Dirksen. And the VRA, Voting Rights Act, 
brought vital protections to African Americans who had been disenfranchised for generations by Jim Crow laws, guaranteeing millions of people the right to vote. The law was so successful and its improvement for our democracy was so universally supported, every Republican president elected since 1965 signed an extension to the Voting uh, Rights Act into law. We approach the act's 50th anniversary. So again, here is that beautiful picture of our city clerk, Inez Brown. Oh, she's such a faithful servant. She's so servant-hearted uh, in our government. And she wants to urge each and every one of you to remember to, to register to vote and get to your local precinct. And those who cannot make it, Inez will facilitate you with an absentee ballot. So please, let's remember to all vote and impact our beloved community like we should. Now, uh, with that, um, I have to share with you, back in 2008, uh, before our beloved Senator Edward Kennedy, they call Ted Kennedy, spoke at the Democratic National Convention in 2008 before he left this life with a brain tumor. Uh, he said he was very weak. He could hardly make it up to the podium, but this is what he said. For all those whose cares have been our concern, the work goes on. The cause endures. The hope still lives and the dream shall never die. Senator Ted Kennedy. And then we had to say goodbye to our beloved senator. Uh, uh, if you remember the uh, fatal brain tumor that took him from us. I would like to have a moment of silence, but time will not permit in remembrance of all of the work this man did, especially to the health care reform that was needed in our country. Um, the uh, uh, study Bible, as I was saying at the beginning of the uh, broadcast, I want you to understand its history, its purpose, and its use. And the Latin word soli dio gloria means in English for God's glory alone. Now the reason these study Bibles have been uh, uh, published is because the Great Commission of Christ uh, to uh, go into all the world and uh, teach and make disciples. And these study Bibles are a tool in your hand. And they also can be uh, disseminated to all of the people of earth in their own language. Uh, through digital technology now, uh, it's going, these study Bibles are going into, believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, 200 different countries. And they've got these study Bibles in, uh, well, over 180 different languages. But the people that propagate and publish this study Bible in this format uh, understand that even though there may be 7,000 different languages in the world, if you can put this study Bible in eight different large people speaking groups, you've got 95% of the earth. In other words, yes, there's 7,000 different languages, but if you put this study Bible and books like this in the eight major people speaking groups, you've got 90 four to 95 percent of the world's population that's close to eight billion people just eight languages uh like for instance china it has approaching 1.4 now billion people uh looking at 2025 a.d and uh so the two major languages there with that 1.4 billion people would be mandarin and cantonese and that's what they're doing they've got it in that language same with hindustani in india that's a, a 1.4 one, 1 1.2 billion people looking at 2020, ladies and gentlemen. This is what's going on. So uh, 
uh, with regard to the study Bible and Christ's Great Commission, uh, I want you all, as you hear my voice in your hearing, I want you, when you go to prayer, to thank God for the study Bible's usefulness, the affordability and the accessibility of the study Bible. Oh, go to prayer and thank God for this great work. Uh, study Bibles are, as I was saying, is being put in other languages. And we strive as Bible propagators and biblicists and those who want to promote biblical literacy to help fulfill the Great Commission in making disciples of all nations. And uh, study uh, Bibles uh, must be brought into the hands of all the peoples of the earth, every tribe, every country, every village, every community. They must be put into the hands of people in their own languages around the world to end biblical illiteracy and to promote biblical literacy. And to that end, uh, God would be glorified. Remember what I said in Latin? Soli Deo Gloria, for God's glory alone, for God's glory alone, to Him be the glory. And that's what this study Bible is all about, getting it into the hands of people around the world to the end that God would be glorified. And that is the purpose of man, that he would live in his life would glorify God. Do you love him? That's the question. Has his people dig deep into his word and thereby come to love and glorify him more and more. Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. That is our ultimate aim, to get God's people not only to read God's word, but to study God's word. Feed us, Heavenly Father, for we are hungry for your word. Love God's word. Obey God's word. Feed off of God's word. Apply God's word. Hide God's word in your hearts. And teach God's word beginning right in your families. Have family devotions. Set your little ones down. And begin to talk to them. Because you may be the only Jesus they will ever know. Please, wake up. Mobilize. And this is a global effort that we are involved in. Continue to pray that we be energized and funded. That is why we publish study Bibles to help fulfill the great commission of Jesus Christ for His glory, not ours. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Uh, now, with regard to uh, the Old Testament prophets, uh, there are more Bible books in this genre or category of Scripture than any other. These books were written over a 300-year period, 760 to 460 B.C., uh, with the writing of the last prophetic book, Malachi, there would be a silent period of 400 years during which God did not communicate revelatory truth. Um, the prophets were loyal servants of God and represented him. They were outspoken uh, with regard to the idolatry of God's people, having other gods before him. and They were passionate in their pleas for repentance and the first great prophet, as you all know, was Moses. And he spoke for God and brought the word of God to them. And uh, there are two other kinds of prophets. There are speaking prophets like Samuel, Elijah, Elisha, and Nathan. And then there were writing prophets like Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel. And then there was 12 minor prophets, Hosea, Joel, Amos, uh, which means judgment, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, and Zechariah, and Malachi. 
The primary function of the prophets was to speak, speak for God. Uh, call the people to radical obedience and reliance upon God. Only secondarily, ladies and gentlemen, did the prophets predict future events distant to their own times. Remember, most of these prophets that I was speaking about was at a period of time of the three kings, King Saul, King uh, David, and King Solomon. And after Solomon's death, the, the Hebrew monarchy split into the north and south, and each one of those kingdoms had uh, good kings and wicked kings. And God, uh, we call Yahweh in Hebrew, or Jehovah, uh, had to send his prophets down, and they were speaking prophets that would actually confront the wickedness and idolatry of his people after Solomon died. And, and in other words, 88% uh, of all of the prophetic messages of these prophets that I just spoke about were with regard to their own time frame and the idol worship of God's people after Solomon died and around that time of the split. Uh, and it really wasn't until our own time frame of 1948 here recently that the, because of their disobedience and idolatry, the Jews have been scattered all over the world. But now they're coming back since 1948 with the United Nations recognizing the state of Israel. They're all coming back, and they are praying now. Uh, and with regard to their prayer, I've got a copy of it here. There was some Jews down at the Wailing Wall, and I said, what are you doing down here? So early in the morning, it was before the sun came up, and as you know, it's it's Friday afternoon right now, 5.06, but over in Jerusalem, Israel, it's already Saturday, Shabbos day, Sabbath day for them, uh, about 1 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning. And uh, they were, they're up there 24-7, 365, and I found one of their prayers here, and this is a one of their prayer books. Uh, I was just curious to see what they are praying, and this is their prayer right here. Um, they put this yarmulke on their head. It's like the Muslims have a kufa, and the Arabs uh, or the uh, uh, the Muslims have a kufa, and the Hebrew Jews have a yarmulke. And they always put that on their head before they pray, and usually put a prayer shawl on too. And uh, what they pray in uh, English, I won't. I'll just read a little bit of it in Hebrew to get me started. Yiskadal viviskadash shimayu araba. Uh, and th then uh, that's all I'm going to say right now in Hebrew, but I'm going to tell you what it says in English, and this is what they're praying. Uh, May God's name be exalted and hallowed throughout the world. Well, that's like kind of what Jesus prayed. When the disciples saw him praying, they said, teach us, Master, how to pray. And Jesus said, you will do thus. I think in Matthew chapter 6, the disciples' prayer, Our Father, which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Well, this is what the Jews are praying here. May God's name be exalted and hallowed throughout the world that God created. Has is God's wish. May God's sovereignty soon be accepted during our life and the life of all Israel. And let us say amen. Uh, may God's great name be praised throughout all time. Elohim Adonai Yahweh. Uh, Yeshua, may his great name be praised throughout all time, glorified and celebrated, lauded and worshipped, exalted and honored, extolled and acclaimed. May the Holy One be celebrated beyond all song and psalm, beyond all tributes that mortals can utter. And let us say, Amen. Let there be abundant peace from heaven. Well, that's what Paul wrote in his epistle after he saw the light that outshines the sun on the road to Damascus, Syria. In his letter to the Hebrews, I believe Paul wrote Hebrews, but because they did not receive him and considered him to be a turncoat, a traitor, he didn't put his name on it because they would drop that letter like a hot potato if they knew that he, Saul of Tarsus, after seeing the light, wrote that letter. So he didn't put his name on it. But he, Paul wrote also in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, Follow peace with all men, and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. And this is what the Jews are praying. Let there be abundant peace. Paul said, follow peace with all men. And here 
the Jews are praying, let the, there be abundant peace from heaven with life's goodness for us and for all Israel. And let us say, Amen. And for all of mankind, may the one who brings peace to the universe bring peace to us and to all of Israel. And let us say, Amen. So, just being curious, uh, a Jew in a local synagogue gave me the prayer book so I could understand what these Jews are beginning to pray. They want God's sovereignty to be soon accepted universally all over the planet. Uh, what is sovereignty? It's a, that's a big theological word, ladies and gentlemen. And, you know, my great uncle 500 years ago, uh, 12 generations removed, uh, my mother had a grandma, Nora Kelvin. This is the Institute of Christian Religions by John Kelvin. This was the theologian of the 16th century, Martin Luther's buddy, starting the Protestant Reformation. And John Calvin, if anything, is the one that, that focused and uh, helped everyone on the planet at that time, 500 years ago. And even to this day, he's read, like the Westminster Confession of Faith of a lot of the Reform movement, take their Confessions of Faith and Catechisms right out of John Calvin's writings of the Institute of Christian uh, Religion. John Calvin is attributed to having founded the uh, Church of England, the Anglican Church, and uh, the uh, Presbyterians of Scotland. He's highly esteemed. And he's my great uncle. His only brother was my great grandfather 500 years ago, 12 generations removed. And John Calvin more or less was saying that the sovereignty of God, and the Jews are praying that Yahweh's sovereignty would soon be accepted by all people of earth, uh, said that sovereignty really means that you really come to know in your heart of hearts that he, uh, the good master, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is in control no matter what. That's sovereignty. He's the architect of all ages. He's in control of everything. And you, dust that you are, mortal man, are not to lean upon your own understanding, but to put your trust in him, and he will direct your footsteps. Only acknowledge him and realize that you are just but dust and know the, of the sovereignty of God and pray that all the people of earth would soon accept his sovereignty. The Jews call him in Hebrew Yahweh. In the Pentateuch, in the first two chapters of Genesis, Moses' book, he is called Creator, which is Elohim, and he takes on a three, in the Hebrew, person's persona. Let us make man in our image. They are talking. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost were before anything was. Uncreated, self-existent, omniscient, omnipotent. That is sovereignty. In control, no matter what. Even though you cannot understand. Lean not upon your own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him. So now you know a little bit more about what sovereignty is. And they're praying that that would soon be accepted. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, people that may have a hardened heart and that, that do not know the grace of God through his son Jesus Christ, uh, like Pharaoh in Egypt when Moses went down there, uh, the judgment of God came upon Pharaoh the more he hardened his heart against what Yahweh God was trying to tell him through his prophet Moses. The harder Pharaoh's heart got, the worse it got. And you know all the pestilences and plagues and uh, the, all the awful Passover angel killing the firstborn of the Egyptians. That's why you should bow before him and accept his sovereignty in your own heart and know he knows best for you. And let him direct your steps. Do not be found on his bad side. Be found living your life to please him and glorify him and his holy name. And thank him for his son, Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me and purchased my salvation on Calvary's tree. And to that is God's glory. And that's why we want to talk about these study Bibles and prophets right now. Now, again, you must remember that 88% of all of Yahweh's prophets of the Old Testament era 
we're speaking of their own time and the idolatry of the kings of the people and the, and the people. Only 2% was messianic in nature. Only 5% described the new covenant age that we are in now, 2015 AD. And 1% described events that are yet to take place like uh, eschatologists, biblicists, people that study end-time prophecy, like call it the Great Tribulation or the 70th week of Daniel. Uh, these things are yet future. And all of those prophets of the Old Testament, only 1% uh, of them describe these events that are yet future. F again, 5% describe the new covenant age that we are now in, the age of grace that ended when Christ died on Calvary's cross at Golgotha. And 2% are messianic in nature. All of, of all the foretelling, the prophets were only, like I said, a foretelling, uh, that was only like 88% was about their time they were in to the Hebrews. And uh, like only 8% really was about the Messiah coming in the future and the new covenant age of grace that we're in and and the events that yet are to take place. So uh, that will help you understand prophets better. And to that end, I want to show you this uh, key word study Bible, King James Version. And uh, in the last two minutes of this particular uh, broadcast, I want to, before we get into the prophets, is to speak to you about, I just got done before the broadcast speaking with uh, Jan Ungerford and uh, as you know, they wanted to liquidate their business, uh, uh, the uh, Lighthouse Bible and Herb uh, shop out in Swartz Creek on Miller Road out by the Dairy Queen by the end of July. But due to circumstances beyond their control, the, here it is at the end of August. They're going to be open all of up until August and probably up to Labor Day. Uh, but they're packing everything they didn't sell in their $50,000 liquidation sale in boxes. But they still are selling Bibles. King James Version giant print for 50% off. And uh, in the last minute, I want to show you some of these uh, beautiful uh, FBI. F is for firm. B is for believers in Jesus. I love Jesus. And the I am the true vine. John chapter uh, 15, verse 1. My father is the vine dresser. And these go for $15 a piece, but they're selling them, ladies and gentlemen, at the Lighthouse Bible Nerve. If you get out there before Labor Day, they're selling them for only $3 a piece. Ladies and gentlemen, don't let this pass you by. Get out to the Bible and Nerve shop in Swartz Creek. Look at these scripture hats, these caps. They're just wonderful. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you come back. There's so much more that I have to share with you that is very critical information. And you're clear. 30 seconds early. You give this to Paul and you give this to Marcus. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, in your envelope of donation, Paul, you will find 